Neil, thoroughly enjoy coming to your company. Glad to be back here today. Uh, the subject really is this MX520 4 pallet machine that you've purchased from Matsura. I want to find out what it's done for the business, what impact it's had. Uh, but firstly, am I right in saying you're the first one to have one of these machines? I believe so, yeah. Um, this actual machine is on the stand at Mac 2018 and it comes straight from Mac to us. So we had to wait for it so they could use it for their display at Mac, Mac Exhibition. And, and it's a great example of comparing this as a four pallet machine to a single pallet machine because yep. you're already a 520 user, yep. obviously a very happy 5, well, a very happy Matsura. Yeah, you yeah, only have to look around the, the, yeah. around the, the uh, factory here. But what's the difference uh, between the four pallet and the single pallet in terms of what it does for your business? It just gives the opportunity to run overnight. Um, so on the 520 single table, um, we bought that originally to do bigger components because we've got the, uh, the MAM and we've got, we've got the horizontals as well. But the MX520 gave us the ability to do much larger parts in a 5-axis configuration. And, and the 4 pallet gives us the opportunity to do that but and run it overnight as well. And when you, when you invest in this sort of machine with this additional um, automation, do, do you need much learning? Do your guys adapt to it quite quickly? For us, no, because we already run in Matsuras. Um, everything's quite interchangeable, so the guys literally jumped off the 520 onto the PC4. The pallet change is very similar. The con control configuration of it's all the same, so no problem. And looking at the, the pallets on this machine, you've actually expanded them to have uh, three components on each, haven't yep. you? So that really gives you the opportunity to do 12 parts. Yeah, so we've made uh, pyramids on each pallet, so we can put three devices on one single pallet, give us more parts overnight. For us, it's about getting as many components as we possibly can in a nighttime run, out of hours. And when you look at the two machines next to each other, I reckon it's only about 20% bigger yeah. with four extra pallets than a single pallet machine. That must have been advantageous to you looking at the space you have here, Neil. Um, yeah. The space is the biggest problem for everybody, I think, at the moment. Um, space costs money, so for us it's about finding a machine with a small footprint that gives us the maximum output we can get out of it. So the PC4, another four pallets on top of what we already, what could we do? So doesn't it, need, doesn't it mean you need more swarf pins, though, the amount of swarf this kicks out? Yeah, there's a lot of swarf, yeah, definitely. A lot of swarf in the whole building. And, and I've had a good look round it today. I have seen it before at Emo, uh, and I know I, I spoke to Dominic about this machine. He was telling me how great it was. Is he right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm a Matsuri user through and through. I mean, I can't fault them at all. Um, we buy Matsuri machines on many reasons, but the number one reason for me, if I'm honest, for buying the Matsuri machine is service. Um, so because you've had a few bad experiences along this journey as well, which yep. I'm sure engineers do. Uh, do you think some other machine tool suppliers could learn a lot from how Matsura conduct themselves? 100%. Um, I think uh, when you have a machine break down, it's never a convenient time, and everybody wants to go next day. Um, Matsu are always very, very reactive, always managed to get in here quick and get the machine fixed and running again. And that is so important because everyone's, especially at the moment, everyone's up to their guts in work, trying to get it out, trying to get work done on time. So for us to have a machine broken down for three, four, five, six days just doesn't work for us. I need it running next day. And a lot of engineers will be thinking, well, okay, how much is this machine? How much is this 520? Is that the right way to look at it in your opinion or should they be thinking how quickly can this machine pay for itself with its productivity and its unmanned running? capability and how much money can it make them the fact it's producing precision parts quickly if you buy a machine on cost alone you're doing the wrong thing because that's not the way to buy a machine because you might buy a cheap machine but in two three four five weeks down the line the machine breaks down you've got machines down for let's say two weeks take that cost in fully as well so i think when you look at Matsura, um they're competitively priced, I think, anyway. Well, I was going to say yeah. that because uh, were you surprised, actually, yeah. certainly with this, the 520 and the new 520 PC, I, I, I've been incredibly surprised at actually how much the outlay is. I think historically, you look at Matsuri and think they're a very high-end brand, they're going to cost you a bit more money. People want to do that, some don't want to even look at it. But generally, if you look at the Matsuri prices, they're not overly priced and they're not, they're not out of the way of everyone else. So when you're getting a, a machine which is going to give you the backup and the quality of the machine they build, why not go for it? And I looked around the machine, as I said earlier, and I, I looked at like things like access points. I yeah. used to be a machine, I uh, used to be a machinist, so I used to look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to scrap things, as people will probably tell you. Um, but I used to look at how, how you get in the machine, how you load parts, where you put the tools. All of this on this machine is very accessible. They put a lot of thought into how it all goes together. 100%. It's obviously engineers have been designing the machines because it's, a, it's built for an engineer to get into the machine, access to the actual components, onto the table. Um, like the, all, all the 520s series, you walk into the machine, and you open the door, it's not just the door and you're leaning over to the table, you're walking into the machine and, and the, the pallet is there. And what options did you go for on this machine? Do you, uh, it looks to me like you highly spec'd it and you may need to because if you're running that unmanned run. 
everything. Whenever I buy any match turn machines, we buy everything because you might need it. It's much more expensive to put it on afterwards than when you do it when you buy the machine, so get it all at the beginning. And, and automation has been a big part of your success. You are, I have to say, unquestionably, probably one of the, the most successful engineering companies in this, uh, in this area. Has that been as a result of the automation and the implementation of this type of technology? 100%. I mean, if I was running an eight-hour shift, an engineering company with one man, one machine, we'd never make money. So our profit comes through night times, unmanned running. Uh, we've got 68 pallets of capacity in here now, all Matsura. That's milling only, obviously we've got mill turn as well. But the automation has enabled us to keep prices down, uh, drop hourly rate during the night time running hours, but more to the point, get more and more components out through those unmanned hours. And you must have a lot of people walk through your doors here. Uh, uh, technical guys, salesmen and all the rest of it. Who is your favourite salesman? Don't comment. <laughs>